so understanding how the image formation takes place in the eye now the point of light on the object is forming the point of light on the retina now understanding the structure of the eye as we have already done the image formation takes place at the retina so let's understand i have uh, let's say a candle here and the light rays are falling from this candle and they are transmitted to the eye now in this process there are three elements in the eye which basically refract the light those are cornea aqueous humor and vitreous humor and then you have the formation of that image that would take place on the retina when the image formation takes place on the retina it's basically a concept of a pinhole camera you would have the inverted image and smaller size of image that would be formed a very very important concept now in the previous section we have already understood what is the blind spot blind spot is the spot just before the optic nerve where you do not have any image that has been formed so let's take a very interesting example in front of me there is a window that is there and on that window there is a fly that is sitting now if i'm focusing on that fly what would happen when i'm focusing on that fly that image of the fly would form on which part of the eye so that image would form on the fovea but this fly which is sitting on the window is here and the image is being formed on the fovea but opposite to that fly is let's say point b which is the border of the window and that border of the window is not visible in the eye and that is because that part is falling where it is falling on the blind spot and this is how we understand what part falls on the blind spot is not visible in the eye and the remaining parts get visible into the eye the next important thing is the image as we said if the fly is here on the window pane the image would be inverted and it would be a little smaller than the actual image that would be formed two very very important concepts that we would understand today is firstly how the intensity of light behaves and the second is the concept of accommodation to understand the intensity of light we need light we need to understand the pupil now pupil the changes in the pupil which which are because of the automatic reflex actions that takes place is very very important to understand what happens when there is all of the sudden bright light you try to close your eyes and the pupil tries to constrict itself however when there is a dim light the pupil expands now which part is pupil we have already understood the innermost part within the circle there is another dark circle that is seen and the innermost circle is the pupil so we are focusing on that part of the eye right now so that pupil basically adjusts itself to the light now within this pupil there are two types of muscles one is the radial muscle which moves out from the pupil uh, and the next is the concentric uh, muscles which are or the circular muscles which are basically concentric in shape now what would happen when the pupil gets constricted when will the pupil get constricted in the case of bright light and when the pupil gets constricted you would have the radial muscles which would be relaxed and the circular muscles would contract clear opposite would happen in the case of dim light so in the case of dim light you would have pupil that would expand now when the pupil is expanding you would have the circular mus muscles which are in the same fashion as the pupil and therefore they will also expand a very simple trick to remember so circular muscles move with the pupil so when the pupil constrict they constrict when the pupil expands they expand the next is the radial muscle radial muscle in this case would 
constrict. So when the case of dim light, the radial muscles would constrict. In the case of bright light, the radial muscles would relax. And that is how the intensity of light is being changed by our eyes. That's the first concept, the first very important concept. The second very important concept is a concept of accommodation or focusing. Now when we talk about accommodation or focusing, what happens? It is the difference with the far objects versus the near objects. Now what would happen when I'm trying to see a far object? When I'm trying to see a far off object, the lens of the eye would dilate and it would become thin. Okay, so the ciliary muscles are basically relaxed and the outward pressure of the uh, humor, humor on the scala basically pulls the ligaments and therefore you would have thinner lens that would be seen and this is when you are trying to see a distant object. Opposite happens when you are trying to see a near object. When you are trying to see a near, near object, it constricts. And when it constricts, what would happen? The pressure uh, basically brings the ligaments tighter and therefore you would have a thicker lens that would be seen. So when you are trying to see near objects, thicker lens is seen. When you are trying to see distant objects, the lens become thin and this is the process of accommodation. So the first concept is the intensity of light where we understand the pupil whether it uh, constricts or it uh, relaxes and the second case where we are talking about the lens getting thin when you are trying to look onto a far off object and it gets thicker when you are trying to see the nearer objects. The next important concept that we would understand is the retina. Now, as we said, retina is the point where you have image formation that takes place. So, you have rods and cones. Rods, as we already understood, provide clear vision during the night or low light intensity is when you have rods that are uh, predominant. However, cones are usually seen with different colors. So, RGB are the main colors which is red, green and blue and when all of these three get equally stimulated, you would have white that would be seen. So, that is cones. Cones are usually seen for, uh, are usually predominant with the day vision. So, that is an important concept under retina that we understand. The part of the retina where you have the clearest image is the fovea and interesting thing about fovea now only two degree cone is the region where you have the brightest vision or the clearest vision that could be seen. So on this screen I repeat again what would happen only two letters of a word would be the most clearest section that would be visible to me but you might say that the whole of the screen appears clear. Why is it so? It is because we are constantly scanning our eyes through the screen. Now when you are constantly scanning your eyes eyes through the screen what would happen the fovea continuously changes and the clearest area continuously shifts and therefore you have a clear vision of the complete image that is seen. The third important concept as we discussed is the blind spot. Now blind spot understand this carefully you have the point just at the tip of the optic nerve where it is and this is the point where there is a total uh, loss of information there is no image formation that takes place uh, and therefore it is known as blind spot now a simple demonstration to understand a blind spot is i have a card i mark circle on one end and i mark cross on one end so on my right i mark a cross and what I do is, I with my left eye, I try to see the right cross, okay. So, I close my right eye, therefore, and with the left eye, I try to see the cross. Now, as I bring, at this point, I am able to see the cross as well as the dot that is there on the paper. But as I try to bring the sheet closer to me, what would happen? When the sheet comes closer to me, the dot would at one point get in would not be visible and the point where this dot disappears is the point 
which is blind spot the same experiment you can do by closing your left eye and with your right eye try to see the dot and bring the card nearer to you so on that card where you have the dot and the cross that is marked you understand how the blind spot is actually visualized now to understand it very simply it's a very very simple model based on the principle of similar triangles where we understand how image formation takes place at the blind spot now in a simple words the size of the blind spot the size of the blind spot that is present divided by 2 would be equal to the diameter of the blind spot divided by the distance with the object that is there so that ratio would remain the same and this is the basic principle where we are trying to understand how the adjustments or the vision actually occurs and try to find out the actual blind spot in the eye so again a very very important concept so what we have discussed in this section the most important concepts are the first is the intensity of light based on the intensity of light we say in the bright light you have the constriction of the pupil that occurs in the dim light the pupil expands then based on the distance if i'm trying to look onto the far off object accommodation of eye takes place and the lens gets thin when the object is closer to me what would happen the lens gets thicker and that is due to the changes in the ligament uh, the suspensory ligaments and the ciliary muscles that are there the next important thing is the concept of blind spot how image gets lost at the blind spot how you have the brightest image at fovea and then you have the retina where the actual image formation takes place